Do we need to make a motion to add the additional appointments to the agenda? Okay. Okay. She said we do not. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. We need that. And then you have to stay. So when we come out of yeah, and then when we come out of the executive session, you come back in the room while we if we, if we make any motions, you should be there too. Out here. We'll stay in that room, but we'll open the door, we'll end executive session. Okay. Make the motion and then adjourn the meeting. Just wait another minute or two so it's seven o'clock. <clears throat> Microphones are on, just so you know. Good evening and welcome to the Monday, September 16th weather, uh, regular council meeting. Um, if we can have Councilor Lesser lead us in the pledge, please. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councilor Breton? Here. Councilor Corris? Here. Councilor Hurley is unable to attend. Councilor Latina? Here. Councilor Lesser? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Marchino? Here. And Mayor Moore and Bello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Our first item on the agenda is a proclamation for Joan Hayes. I'd like to come on up to the podium with me, and I'd be happy to present it to you. So we have a certificate of recognition this evening. Whereas Joan Haynes has resided in Wethersfield for over 50 years and has been married to her husband, Dr. William Haynes, for 54. Together they have raised three children who reside from Maine to Texas, which she is very fond of spending time with, and her five adored grandchildren. Whereas over 38 years ago, Joan started the Stroke Support Club, which provides support for survivors and their families on a monthly basis at the Pitkin Community Center, and is very proud of the work it has done and continues to do. And whereas Joan joined the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities over 35 years ago, and her hard work has inspired many projects and concerns, like handicapped curb cuts, parking, working with high school students on engineering projects for the community, collecting donations for Mikey's Place, the playground at the community center, and has served as chairperson and co-chairperson, earning the respect and appreciation of fellow members of our community as well as town staff. And whereas Joan has been instrumental in helping Christine Taylor in social and youth services and making sure fruit and vegetables that are purchased are packaged correctly and has helped with the food purchasing during the summer for 80 town residents every month for the last three years since the inception of the Senior Food Initiative through the Mayor's Charity Ball fundraiser. 
And whereas an active member of the First Church of Christ, Joan assists in many church activities, programs, and a very dedicated volunteer for the Wethersfield Rocky Hill Nurses Association, assisting in flu clinics, never missing a day when scheduled to volunteer in our community. Now, therefore, on behalf of the town council, I, Amy Morin Bellow, mayor of the town of Wethersfield, with great appreciation and thanks, do hereby recognize Joan Haynes for the tireless commitment to the town of Wethersfield by using her time and outstanding talents as a very dedicated volunteer and wish her continued success and happiness in the future. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed the 16th day of September, 2019. Joan, thank you for all of your years of service to our community. We appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, and as everyone, I'm sure I guess this, I, I, you know, I really, really don't deserve it, but I appreciate and uh, have, have loved being a part of the town of Wethersfield and having our kids grow up in Wethersfield and my husband so active, and we have, we have loved, loved being a part of this community, and my beginning certainly was my stroke support group, but then it was Tom Lasher who came along and said, that you need to be on my committee. And anyone that served with Tom Lasher with ALS, I mean, we, we, really, we really served and we, we loved it. And to see him on a ventilator and a wheelchair, it was very inspirational. So I got a lot of inspiration from him. And thank you so much for, for honoring me. And, I'll, and I guess that's all I can say is thank you. And, and we'll be around for a while. My husband thinks we're going to be here forever. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. And uh, he's, he's a real optimist. I'm not quite so sure. But anyhow, uh, we, will, we will try and we'll certainly keep, keep you know, Weathersfield in our hearts and keep, keep volunteering. And that's a great thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we have no hearings this evening, so we'll move right into public comment. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. Uh, please state your name and address and speak um, clearly into the microphone so that we can hear you both in the room and on TV, please. Is there anybody who would like to speak this evening? Come on up. My name is Cindy Wasserman, 33 Lincoln Road. I'm here to express my concerns about the dog daycare on Beaver Road. My property abuts it, so there's the daycare, the railroad track, and then my property. I can hear these dogs barking for very long periods of time in my house, all the windows and doors shut on a regular basis. Outside, same thing. It, these dogs can go on for a very long time. and. Additionally, sometimes you have, in addition to the dogs, you have the workers at the dog daycare yelling at the dogs. I, I cannot understand for the life of me why this type of facility was allowed to operate so close to a residential area. And that is my concern, and I hope that the council will give it good consideration as to why this happened and what can be done to make this better. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? <clears throat> Mr. Duffy. Thank you, everybody. Joe Duffy, 27 Lincoln Road. And I, I second in spades what my great neighbor Cindy Wasserman has said. I'm not going to belabor the point because you've heard me before. Uh, we eagerly await the results of the acoustical engineers' uh, opinions on how they're going to contain the sound, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it's still a quality of life issue, terrible. I mean, we could go on all night, but we won't. Uh, and something has to be done because property values, we think, are threatened by this beside peace of mind. So uh, thank you to the, the members with whom we've spoken already. Thank you very much. And we look forward to a speedy solution. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Hello, my name is Jerry Jingers, 21 Dorchester Road. Um, 
I also am uh, in, in the community with the uh, doggy daycare and, and hear, the, uh, hear the noise quite often and it, it, is, an, it is a nuisance. Uh, we do have a, 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 a rule in the books, 70-3 um, um, refers to nuisance and nuisance specifically uh, associated with barking dogs and there are um, citations that are supposed to be issued in the event that um, you know this this kind of thing continues and I guess I, I would ask wh why are we not issuing citations if there's a reason for that um, and and if the citations aren't uh, addressed quickly there is a hundred dollar a day fine that uh, is supposed to be imposed so um, you know as a resident of the community uh, we're, I'm quite concerned that, that um, and I'd like, if the citations are not being imposed, I would ask that we consider imposing those cit citations. It is a nuisance, um, and it's not you know, so much a decibel thing as it is just uh, uh, barking dogs uh, as uh, proposing a nuisance to the general community. Um, this is, uh, that community that involves the Hubbard homes, which for the town of Wethersfield, we, we take pride and cherish. Uh, the history associated with the uh, Albert G. Hubbard homes and that uh, is a large part of our community that is affected by this. So um, I, I think we do need to remedy it and, um, and, and perhaps uh, you know, re re requiring that those, those dogs be kept indoors uh, might be a, a solution that would, would solve a lot of problems. But at, at this point, if it's not going to happen, um, I, I'd really like to to, to press on the issue of citations and citations um, and, and the animal control officer as well as the police uh, are charged with, uh, with, with handling and administering those. And uh, I see that as a duty to, this, to the citizens of this town, not a choice as to whether we, 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 we impose those citations or not. We do have a regulation on the books. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? <laughs> Good evening, Karen Williams, 149 Garden Street. Um, five minutes isn't enough, and if I understand, we're not supposed to ask questions. But where the hell are we? This is your five minutes. You may make your comments, okay. but we do not engage in dialogue. So okay. you have five minutes and to that's speak. That's one question I do have. In a public forum and a town council with people, if we can't dialogue with one another, what the hell is a sense of meeting? I don't get it. What kind of rule says only we get to speak and we can't ask questions when we're seeking answers? Why? The, the rules, this is the way the Whose rules, rules are set. Whose rules is it? Is this the town the, council the rules representing the, council. the people? Mr. Williams, use your five minutes to speak. I'm using them, kid. That's fine, but we're not engaging in dialogue with okay. you, so go ahead and give so us your comments. So how do we address that issue going forward, if that's not a question? Or if I was to ask a question, I think I'd say, how the hell do we get that we can speak publicly with one another? How? I don't know. You don't give us a forum. We met a couple of weeks ago, the mayor, the uh, town manager. We were told, uh, Mr. Rell was there, we were told actions were going to be taken, letters are going to be written, results were expected, and that we would be communicated with. <clears throat> We've not received one phone call, one email, one letter, one update. Nothing. Zero. Z, zip, nothing. Is that fair? Oh, I'm sorry, that's a question. Let me tell you then, as a statement, it sure as hell isn't. You take this rather cavalierly and you've got a portion of the dozens of people who are living a unhappy lifestyle due to the decision that has been made by planning and zoning, which we will be at that tomorrow. If your tactic is to stall and delay, I hate to be confrontational, but we're riding this horse 
as long as it takes. And I'd like to uh, follow up on <coughs> Mr. Jengers' comment. Um, public nuisance, I'm reading our town's regs. Any animal in the life that endangers the life or health of persons or other animals or substantially interferes with the rights of citizens other than their owners to enjoyment of life or property, the term public nuisance shall include but not be limited to any animal that barks, whines, howls, makes any noise natural to its species in an excessive or continuous fashion so as to disturb the peace except where such activity occurs on a farm. That's our rules. Planning and zoning is supposed to make decisions that protect people. And if they need help, that would be your job. Over seven months this has been going on. When does that become unfair? Sorry, question. It is not fair. You're taking it rather cavalierly. We get the bull crap that says, oh, it's government, it takes time. Don't buy that, it doesn't take seven months. Not when we have nuisance laws. No person shall make, continue, permit on property owned and controlled by such person any excessive, unnecessary, unreasonably loud noises or any noise disturbance or disturbs, destroys comfort, quiet, repose, health, peace of others within the vicinity of the noise. I don't know. Here's something that you may not be aware of. Definition of a veterinarian. A person trained and authorized to practice veterinary medicine and surgery. A doctor of veterinary medicine. A person who holds an academic degree, <coughs> pardon me, in, in veterinary medicine. A licensed practitioner of veterinary medicine. A person trained and authorized to practice veterinary medicine or surgery. A doctor of veterinary medicine. Now, under the towns, planning and zoning people, they put that umbrella under a kennel. Here's the definition of kennel. A house or shelter for a dog or cat. Same? Similar? Close? What are you kidding me? And you want to hide under that excuse because the jackass before who's there now just was leaving and just slid this through. Well, it, it covers, it does everything. Any consideration for the people? Your time's I'm not up. done yet. You have, te you have about 10 seconds to finish okay. up, and then you can come and then back we'll at add the these end four of the or meeting. Five seconds. Okay. What is going to be the follow up action here with when? You gave us a follow up, you gave us a timeline, you told us you would communicate with us. It hasn't happened. What do we do? We're going to, you're right. We're going to chase the nuisance laws every day. I've been in contact with the chief. It says in the regs that the dog, the uh, animal control officers are responsible for this. Every day. And we're also, I'll tell you now, what, what does a town not want? Bad publicity. You will force us to take this to every news channel, newspaper, that we have to. You're not interested in, in protecting us. You're interested in protecting the silly, asinine law that's in the books. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Mr. Woodworth? Jim Woodworth, uh, 33 Mill Street, 5H. I came to... Uh, Remind people that on September 28th is the source to the sea cleanup at the Weathersfield Cove, and please join us. Uh, if you want to talk about public nuisances, the trash that ends up flying over 91, that ends up floating off the streets of Hartford into the Cove is amazing, and it, uh, the town cleans up its uh, bathtub ring on the park side, but the rest of it kind of flows across, and... Uh, Every year for the last 10 years or so, we've gotten a ton. Every year. It's unbelievable. So uh, come join us, and uh, thank you to some of the uh, town council members who've been before, and uh, hopefully, uh, and everybody has a busy schedule, but if you've got some time, 8 to 11 on Saturday morning, um, MDC, Julie McLaughlin at MDC provides refreshments and pickers and bags 
and uh, we hope to have the uh, Fish and Wildlife Service airboat, which will pick up trash from various places along the shore. Um, the Great Meadows Conservation Trust will be there, and uh, we hope to have some kayaks or canoes to get in the corners right along the edge in the shallow parts where uh, stuff seems to float. In particular, last year, the water was a little higher, and there was so much that was just out there we couldn't get it. So the more we can get, the less it will be next time, I think, I hope. And the less it will go into the ocean and do all those bad things that it does down there. Thank you very much. Hope to see you on Saturday the 28th. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. As for Mr. Williams, who was up here talking and asking for questions, uh, Mr. Williams, that's business as usual with our town council. They're running for election next week, in the next couple months. Remember that and tell all your friends, don't vote for any of them. Furthermore, Mr. Williams, back in the summer, they wanted to change the rules on speaking here at the town council. Mr. Forrest, you see him sitting there, chairman of the Forest Commission. Mr. Lesser sitting over there as well was a member and Miss Latina. And they came in here and what they wanted to do was revise the way that we talk to our town council. One meeting a month, we'd have to, we'd have to only be able to talk about the, what's on the agenda. That meant things that you wanted to talk about, you could not talk about. The other meeting of the month, you could talk about anything you wanted. And I think they tried to eliminate one of the meetings, one of the speaking times as well. Only, only Mr. Williams, Mr. Spinella, sitting up here, objected to that. And Mr. Hurley, who's not here tonight. But these, under Mr. Forrest, Mr. Lesser, and Ms. Latina, they wanted to shut the, they wanted to come up with a whole new attitude of how we can speak to our town council members. And they should be, re, they should not be reelected. I know Ms. Latina is not running. I don't know why, but she's not running, but the, the other two are definitely running and you, you and your friends want to remember that come election day. As a matter of fact, m most of them wanted to shut us down. Even Tony sitting here who's not running wanted to shut us down. So think about that, Mr. Williams. It's, this is business as usual. Anyway, and I have a gripe too. It was back in January 2nd, 2019. I, I attended and I gave a presentation to the State of Connecticut FOI Commission hearing officer in, um, in Hartford. Why the town should release the Keisha Farm appraisal to the public. You got to realize, Mr. Williams, they didn't give us the, the appraisal for that, for that property. They held it back because they didn't want to show it to us. And of course, here in, 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 um, in, 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 in Weathersfield, there's a caveat. The caveat is that, that in order for them to get this property approved for purchase and to, and to uh, purchase it uh, with bonding, uh, they had to go, come to the citizens and ask us to do it, yet they wouldn't give us the appraisal. Not one of them. Not one gave even a, a, a slight smidgen about that appraisal. As such, the voters of Wethersfield, before they cast their vote, should have had access to the appraisals or appraisal contracted for and by the town and paid for by the Wethersfield taxpayers. Further, the town's assessor should have provided the public with insight into the proposal to include market value of the property. She came up here and spoke, but she didn't, she didn't talk about value. And more importantly, if the town's appraisal was less than $2.4 million stipulated on the ballot, Certainly the voters should have seen that appraisal. 
and should have been privy to that information, something they were not. So you got a gripe? We do, I do too. Going forward, the voters should be fully informed before authorizing their elected officials to financially support a multi-million dollar venture such as the purchase of the Keisha Farm in Weathersfield, as well as a similar bond issue brought before the public within all the other 168 towns within Connecticut. As of this date, the farm has been sold to the town and the taxpayer money has been expended in a huge way. And we don't know yet how much more they're going to spend. Because now there's all kinds of development that they're going to have to do, they might do on the property. So, um, yet it wasn't until September 10th, 2019, I was informed of what was contained within the appraisals sought by the town of Weathersfield on this property. You had your public hearing the first week or so of September, and I didn't get to see the appraisal till a full year later. Your almost. time is up, so wrap up, Well, please. I know my time is up, but there's a lot more to talk about, madam. Well, then you, you can speak at the bad, end of the meeting. Bad, bad, and, this, and the public should know that. And I hope when they go to vote, they don't vote for a single one of you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Come on up. Okay, that's fine. Just make sure you give your name and address and speak right into the microphone so we Jerry can hear you. Well, 20 Dorchester Road. Listening to the barking dogs. Love dogs, own a dog myself. I wonder if, and I know you can't answer this, if any of you have been over there to listen to this. Have you heard it? It's just, and we're retired and we're getting older and to be out in your yard or in your house and listen to all this is distracting and We've lived in Granby and East Granby. Generally, places like this are out in the country, not behind the post office or right in the middle of town. And just one more thing. Our neighbors, a young couple, bought the house next to us about 10 years ago, and they adopted a dog. And the dog was in the backyard, and it was barking. It was like 7.30 in the morning. And he must have been the dog warden. I don't know what his name was. He lived on Church Street. He called them and said, you better shut that dog up because I'm going to come over and get him. And, you know, threatening. And that was one dog, not what we're listening to. There. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Come on up. Thank you, um, Donna Duffy, 27 Lincoln Road. Um, I too am complaining about the barking dogs. I've recently retired, looking forward to having some peace, and I now have to leave my home to get some quiet. From 7.40, roughly 7.40 in the morning, until actually today it was um, 6.30 when I left to come to this meeting, that the dogs were still barking. There's probably a 10 minute hiatus in between the barking. I too hear someone yelling at the dog saying, stop barking. And frankly, I'm sick of it. I don't wanna have to leave my home to get some peace. I've sent emails to both Mr. Evans and Ms. Bello. Um, I do get responses. I ask questions, but I have never gotten an answer to, to two questions. One of them was, when um, is the establishment, the business, supposed to produce these papers? And two, why doesn't the town have a copy of that? I've been dealing with this for seven months, and my patience is gone. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Oh, Mr. Duffy, you've already spoken, so you can come. You could come back at the end of the meeting to speak a second time. Oh, the end of the meeting. Yes, at the end of the meeting. Yep. We really change that free speech thing. Everybody should speak. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Come on up in the back. Hi, uh, John Noel, 20 Dorchester Road. 
I need relief from my wife complaining about these dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Every day I'm hearing about these dogs, and you've got to give me a break. Best comment of the She's night. She's absolutely right about the dogs, to be perfectly honest with you. It is a nuisance, and it really should have never went in that area. And now we're stuck with it. And something definitely has to be done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Oh, come on up. Uh, my name is Christine Schwartz. I live at 45 Deerfield Road, so I'm directly almost behind the dogs. And they have been a huge nuisance. I'm not quite in retirement yet, although I wish I was. Um, but I have, you know, young children. We're always outside playing. And starting from 7 o'clock on, even on Sunday mornings, I can hear them. Um, it's, it's definitely affecting the quality of life. Um, my house is actually on the market right now. And um, I had gotten feedback from two showings I've had from my agent. Um, with questions regarding the dogs barking and those people that have come and viewed my home have been there for less than an hour So you don't have to live there in order to realize the problem We just we need answers. We need something done. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that'd like to speak this evening? Okay, seeing no one will declare public hearing closed We'll move into council reports. Are there any council members that have reports this evening? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. The Veterans Committee met last week, last Wednesday, and I wanted to update you on three things. Uh, first, on uh, October 19th, we are going to be helping two veterans at their house uh, with uh, cleanup. It's kind of a mini Habitat for Humanity type project, and we've partnered with a statewide group called House for Heroes, and I want to thank Councilor, excuse me, Deputy Martino, Deputy Mayor Martino, for giving me that referral, and we're uh, going to be doing some good work at the Veterans House. Secondly, we're going to start uh, coffees for veterans this fall to kind of learn what's on their mind and to see what kind of things. Uh, of our interests and our needs. And then lastly, with the Veterans Committee, we're looking into uh, doing the needs assessment survey uh, for the veterans. So a lot happening uh, with the Veterans Committee. Thanks, Mayor. Great, thank you. Councilor Rell? Uh, this isn't uh, a report for the uh, Planning and Zoning, but as the liaison for the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, it's come to my attention that tomorrow's meeting has been canceled, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, for those folks who had mentioned that they were going, Mr. Williams, uh, if you were going to be there, uh, it is canceled for tomorrow night. I apologize for that in late notice. Uh, I believe I had just gotten it just a little while ago. Does it have to be another two weeks? Pardon my question. I believe you can ask questions to me anytime. Um, you, uh, I believe it is two weeks. It would be the two week. And again, if I there is enough... Uh, uh, items on the agenda, they would have it. This meeting has been canceled due to a uh, lack of anything on the agenda. How do we get on that agenda? That blessed agenda. And you have no meetings if there's nothing on the agenda. And yet you've got a massive issue that needs to be addressed, still isn't addressed, hasn't been addressed. Okay, Mr. Williams, this is council comment time. I believe the town manager will um, have some follow up during his comments, but right now it's no longer public comment, it's council comment. So if, if you are finished, Councillor Rell? I am, but I believe, I mean, like the mayor said, I mean, you can't, if you have an application or anything like that, that's when you could bring that before um, P and Z, unfortunately. Uh, unlike the town council, they don't have five minutes comment on any top general topic that has to pertain to action on the agenda. And without any agenda items, there's no action to be taken. Sorry. And the town manager will follow up during his comment that he has some more information on that. Are there any other counselors? Deputy Mayor? Uh, last week was the EDIC meeting. Uh, we got an update on the, all the vacant properties on town and uh, things are moving along. And for anybody that's noticed, right next to where the board is going up and back was the uh, Puritan Furniture Building. Uh, 
they're just finishing now, finishing tearing that building down, and they're getting ready to submit an application to uh, planning and zoning for uh, what they want to build over there. So that'll be coming out soon. Uh, so uh, they're moving forward, you know, in that area just on the basis of what happened with the board and, and at, you know, they're not looking anything for anything out of the town. The developer is doing this on his own. So uh, we're happy to see this, you know, mushrooming from the board into something else, which will improve the silo steam. Uh, some more. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council members? Council Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Briefly, uh, redevelopment met after the Economic Development Committee. That committee continues to go out and talk to landowners and do some uh, good matching of landowners and developers in order to start to move some of the underutilized and, under, and less dense properties in our town. And it seems like they're finding some success about matching individuals who are interested in moving their properties and then developers coming in and talking about their vision for Weathersfield and what they can do with certain pieces of land. So that seems to be a very positive effort. In addition to, um, I've, uh, there was discussion about maybe improving our blight ordinance in certain areas, especially when we see some of these properties that are clearly have some dilapidation on them, uh, as well as working on a streamline process or, or continue to streamline an, uh, a process for approvals when you, have, when you deal with larger developments and the need for multiple uh, committees to be involved, like inland wetlands, planning and zoning, uh, and, and uh, other committees. There's a, there can be a streamlined process that can be appealing to outside businesses when they want to come in and, and, and work on spending money within the town of Weathersfield. Thank you. Any other councilors? Okay, we'll move into council comments. Do any council members have comments this evening? Councilor Latina. Uh, I just want to say that Mike Hurley made it through his surgery well, and he sends his blessings to everybody for giving him well wishes. He's on the road to recovery. He still has a long way to go, but um, he's very happy to report that he's home and resting. So that's great news for everybody, for him especially. Um, I did have a couple questions. I wondered, um, Tony, do you know whether the updates you got at that meeting about the vacant properties, whether that's going to be posted on the website, or how can, how can we read about that? Uh, that's probably in their minutes that they put out, so I'll we'll have to check to see when those get posted. Okay, just I'm just curious because if we weren't at the meeting, how could we find out? Yeah, and Peter um, Peter Gillespie usually uh, supplies us with that quarterly, I think, list of new businesses and or just updates on vacant properties if he's gotten any headway. Um, and the other question pertains to the Puritan Building being demolished um does that come off tax rolls immediately or how does that work you can always get back to us it's just a <laughs> question just a question the reason why i'm pausing is it's different in each municipality and i'm not sure of the rules here but typically after they file the demolition and it's been demolished they actually have to apply to the assessor's office for them to process the removal of it i don't know if they've done that yet and i also should probably double check to make sure that's a process in weathersfield but i'll get back to you okay um, and then lastly, um, a lot of the folks in the public might not understand the legislative process and Robert's rules, which is what we abide by. Um, so maybe that's an opportunity to educate everybody. I understand you think we can comment back and forth, but we really can't because it's our public meeting, but we hear what you have as far as your concerns are. So, How do we get answers? Um, How do we get answers? Well, it's important that you come up and speak so that we can hear what, what the concerns are, and then the town staff works back and forth to get those answers. And when they don't communicate back with you, and they don't follow up emails? Mr. Williams, I've asked you not to speak. You've, you've had your public comment. It's now council comment. And we don't like to have to um, speak out against people in the public, but you're being disruptive to our meeting when you ask us questions. This is now our... Excuse me, this is now our our time to speak. I'm sorry, I, and I don't mean to participate in no, back not, and forth. I, know. I just think that maybe we could obviously bring him up to date during the town manager's comments. And he has every intention of doing that as, as well as telling us the business that's going into Puritan. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Um, I am happy to hear about um, Mike Hurley, so thank you for sharing that with us. We are all thinking about him hoping for a full and quick recovery. Uh, any other council comments, Deputy Mayor? Uh, I just want to make a comment. Last uh, week, uh, 
the Sopo Funeral Chapel had their third annual luncheon for uh, town staff, volunteer fire, and am ambulance people. Uh, they're showing their appreciation to uh, our staff for their, the job that they do and the cooperation they give to help them out uh, during the course of the year. And I just want to commend uh, the Sopo Funeral Chapel on it because it does wonders for the morale of our staff. Thank you. Any other council comments? Okay, I'd like to, I, I forgot to print this off, so I have to read it in tiny font on my phone, but just a few um, announcements. This Saturday, September 21st, is the Weathersfield Corn Fest on the Broad Street Green. That's uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, like Mr. Uh, Woodworth said, September 28th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. is the 23rd annual Weathersfield Cove in Connecticut River Source to Sea Cleanup. Um, Saturday, October 5th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is the Old Weathersfield Arts and Crafts Fair. Uh, and I think that's it for events in Weathersfield that are occurring before our next meeting. So just wanted to let people in the public know of that. Um, Next, we'll move into the town manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, and to the council. Um, you really take the fun out of it when you ask all the questions before I get a chance to give my report, <laughs> but I'll, I'll do my best to summarize. Um, so uh, just quickly, the RDA did uh, have a discussion about the blight ordinance. Uh, internally, staff is reviewing it, and we're waiting for corporation counsel, the town attorney, uh, to give some feedback. A couple quick highlights, and again, this is prior to the attorney telling me, no, you can't do this. Uh, but we're looking to create a clearer and a cleaner enforcement process so that we can move a lot quicker, um, specifically on those habitual violators that we seem to be going out and uh, reminding them on a regular basis that they're uh, violating certain uh, ordinance of the town. So we're looking for a shorter response time. Uh, we're increasing or we're creating that ability to now lean properties for non-action. Um, we're, we're currently doing that. What will move forward from this point, uh, if approved, is that we'll have the ability to take a first position over all other liens except for tax liens. So it's really that opportunity to add teeth to the enforcement process um, through the threat of possible foreclosure. I don't want get anyone to get concerned. We're not going out to look to foreclose on properties, but we're trying to create that um, you know, carrot or the stick type principle. If you're going to habitually violate these and they're aggressive and abrasive enough, we need to get you in compliance because we need to address blight um, before it becomes kind of that uh, pebble in the water ripple effect that goes on. Uh, as part of that, we'll look to establish a fund that would create a clean and lean program that would allow us to take some of those fines and fees to come back into the um, into a pot of funds that could be used for additional enforcement actions. This way it doesn't fall on the taxpayer through the general fund. And um, as part of that a little further, and I'm going to watch uh, Kathy Bagley and Erica Texera's eyes light up when I say this. Um, they'll strangle me later. But the, uh, to add a component for our, as part of a housing management team, we do recognize that a number of individuals that are going through this process um, who may have issues with maintaining their property, might have other issues that need to be addressed in, um, in a polite way and in a tactful way. So we're looking to bring our other services in to that fold so we make sure that we're providing a full amount of, a full array of services to the residents here. Uh, and then lastly, a lot of issues have come up recently, and I know that Council Lesser has also brought it to my attention a number of times, that there seems to be a lot of errant shopping carts up and down the, uh, a number of areas in town. Uh, we're looking to address that through some conversations with the um, with the business owners, but also to create a level of enforcement so that we have the ability to, uh, again, carrot of the stick, um, to, to have a little bit of teeth. So the, those are the quick highlights of that. Um, in addition, I've been spending a lot of time speaking to uh, or having conversations about solar energy and the ability to ev evolve um, uh, the uh, the town properties, town owned properties, to see if there's any advantages to installing um, alternative any options. Uh, Council Forrest has brought that to the RDA a number of times. We've had a number of conversations as how we can best address it. Um, and so over the last few weeks, I've met with and had conversations with a number of uh, different communities around the state. Uh, and I've also encouraged CCM 
uh, through the contract that we have them to do a little research for us because they are an independent organization. They can provide us some feedback without us a fear of a solar energy company saying, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of savings for you and uh, you should sign up with us right away. We wanted to create a little arm's length transaction there. Um, and so I'm hoping to have that within the next few weeks. Puritan Furniture de Demolition, um, this just happened recently, so there was no way for you to know about this, but um, the old Puritan Furniture building at 1210 Silestine Highway was knocked down. Uh, they're in the process of cleaning that up. The new owner actually just recently submitted plans for that site. They're looking at 80,000 square foot commercial development uh, spread out over two buildings, and the focus at this point will be medical office use. Uh, I'll jump for a second. So the mayor, Councilor Rell, and myself met with a number of the neighbors from uh, Garden, Lincoln, and Dorchester uh, to discuss the ongoing issue at Doggy Daycare, uh, also known as WAG Time. Um, as we mentioned during the meeting and in a subsequent email that was sent, we are following a process in order to review and ensure compliance. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission, which has been stated uh, a number of times, just to be clear, and, and the meeting has been canceled, um, PZNC has not reviewed, acted on, or seen an application related to this property. The issue came through an administrative process, so they haven't had an opportunity to address this. There was no approval. Um, therefore, a number of the items that were mentioned in the statute and the ordinance don't apply. Um, that it, it does, it is very common for a planning process to have um, to have similar uses or like uses as acceptable for an administrative process and that's simply how this fell into play. Um, that being said, uh, a letter was sent out to the property owner to gain compliance and to ask them to provide the information uh, that they stated that they had. We had no record of it, but we had to provide them that opportunity. Uh, as of Friday, um, they could not provide that information, so as of 10 a.m. this morning, we met with the owner as well as their attorney um, to discuss the method to go from here. They have retained uh, or an um, acoustical engineer uh, who is providing information related to what might actually dampen the sound. They've also engaged an engineering firm to determine what those costs might be associated with it. They will be submitting to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, a new site plan as well as all of that backup information um, at a subsequent agenda, which hasn't been named yet. My assumption is it will be in October. Uh, you know, I, I can't estimate, but I would say probably in October by the first meeting of November, we should probably be in front of Planning and Zoning for discussion. Um, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything on that. So that's it for the doggy daycare. Uh, and lastly, I don't know if anyone noticed around time, but they have been filming our second Lifetime original movie in the last two years here in town. They are, it's entitled Rediscovering Christmas and it's expected to air on or around December 15th. And that is my report at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, does the town clerk have any communications at this time? I'd like to say we did not have the uh, primary in September, but we do have the election in November. And we have absentee ballots will be available for people to pick up or to uh, order uh, first. We would have, um, they're going to be due October 4th. We will have the absentee ballots in the office for availability. October 4th. Okay, thank you. Um, moving into council action, we have the acceptance of resignations from boards and commissions. Do I have a motion? Uh, motion to accept the resignation from the insurance commission from John F. Dolan III, 560 Wilkert Hill Road. His term was from 7215 to 63020. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. We have some appointments to boards and commissions. Do I have a motion? Uh, motion to appoint people to the following committee, starting off with the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. The Housing Authority Rep will be <coughs> Silvana Flattery of 60 Lancaster Road, term from 916-19 to 630-21. Uh, 
to the Board of Building Appeals, Paul Brady, 16 Church Street from 916-19 to 630-24. To the Personal Board of Appeals, Christy Salters Pendenal, uh, 15 Fairmont Street, 916-19 to 630-22. To the Youth Advisory Board, Janice D. Roberts, 87 Meadowgate Street, 916-19 to 630-22. To the Veterans Commission, Frank Cena, 103 Eastern Drive, 916-19 to 630-21. And to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an alternate, Rita Ann Owen, 42 Wells Farm Road, 916-19 to 630-22. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries. Uh, we have no approvals of ordinances and resolutions. We have no matters of unfinished business. So we'll move into other business. Youth Services Bureau grant application. Do I have a motion? I make a motion, uh, be it resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Weathersfield that Gary Evans, Town Manager, is hereby authorized to make, execute, and approve on behalf of the Town of Weathersfield, a contract between the Department of Children and Families and the Town of Weathersfield Department of Social and Youth Services. Said contract should be in the amount up to $30,764 for contributions to program services within the Youth Services Bureau for fiscal year 2019 and 2020. Okay, thank you. Um, Town Manager, do you want to comment or should we? Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Second. Councilor Breton. Appreciate that. Um, Thank you for keeping me in line. Um, town Manager, are you going to comment on this or will we have Kathy or Erica come up? How about I do a quick one and then we'll Fantastic. allow Erica to do the answer. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This is an annual grant the town has been successful in uh, getting over a number of years. It allows the town to provide needed services to youth through the Youth Service Bureau. Uh, grant funds will work to increase the town's ability to provide these needed services while reducing the financial burden on the taxpayer as well. Um, and uh, Erica Texera, the Assistant Director, or Director of Youth and Family Services, sorry, uh, is, can provide more information. Hi, Erica, thank you. Hi, good evening. Thank you, Mayor, Town Council Members, Town Manager. Um, so, like Gary explained, um, uh, we've gotten this grant for many years in the past. Um, this year is a little different since it's not with the State Department of Education. It's actually coming through um, Department of Children and Families. Still the same amount for the regular um, youth service grant, which um, helps to provide services by contributing to youth service salary for personnel. And then we also have enhancement grant that has actually doubled this year to t um, over $10,000. And that is used to enhance services that we already have in place for youth in town. Thank you. Any council questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries, thank you. Um, next is Amplify grant application. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to authorize the town manager to apply and execute all documents necessary to accept a local prevention council grant to provide prevention programs to th for the students in Weathersfield in the amount of $5,342. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Erica? Thank you. <clears throat> um, so again, with this grant, um, we have gotten it for many years in the past. Um, prior to this, it has come through um, under CASAC, Capital Area Substance Abuse Council. Um, and this um, grant offers prevention programs to youth in town, both at the middle school level um, as well as the high school level. And we actually started to incorporate some prevention work through the DARE program with the DARE officers as well. Thank you. Are there any council questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries, thank you. Um, next, we have grant funds on behalf of the Juvenile Review Board. Do I have a motion? I move to authorize the town manager to apply for and execute all documents necessary to accept a Department of Children and Families grant of $10,000 for assistance to our Juvenile Review Board. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. 
Erica again? <laughs> yes. Um, thank you. Um, so we will apply for a $10,000 grant from the Department of Children and Families to support our intensive case management um, with youth, uh, at-risk youth, through our juvenile review uh, program that we have here in town. We've received these grants for a couple years now. Um, it's really beneficial, especially with a lot of the mandates that are coming through to divert um, youth from the court system. Um, and with all these three grants, what's great is that we've been able to partner with a lot of the surrounding towns, so Newington, Berlin, Rocky Hill. We like to use our money and pool it so we get the most for what we're doing. Thank you. Any council questions on this one? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Erica, thank you for you, and, yeah. uh, Kathy, and your whole staff for all the work you do. Specific question, yeah. how many s students are being served by this grant? Do you have a sense of, and are the numbers growing in terms of the needs for the juvenile youth board? The juvenile review board? Yeah. Um, yes, the needs are growing. Um, um, we're mostly seeing it because we have a lot of mandates now that are be diverting the youth from court um, so that they don't have to go through that process and instead can work within their communities. Um, so it's a really, it's a great concept. It just is putting a lot more strain on the department since we're getting those referrals from the, um, the schools and also the police department. And as a follow-up, can you say some of the categories that they're being referred, some of the things that the youth are, are doing that's getting them referred to this? Sure. Board? So uh, we've seen an increase. We're definitely um, hitting close to like 40 <coughs> youth that are coming through annually. Um, and the categories are um, beyond control issues, runaways, um, truancy, school defiance of behavior, those types of issues. Thank you. So um, the schools and the police departments are no longer able to file um, family with service needs with the courts, so they're being all diverted here to youth service bureaus. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed and any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. You too. Uh, next, we have the IBPO Local 391 Collective Bargaining Agreement. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to ratify the IBPO Local 391 Collective Bargaining Agreement covering July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2022. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Town Manager, will you like, are you speaking on this? Or are we having the Chief come up? Um, I'll do a, a quick intro, and then if you have questions or anything, I have uh, often, uh, well, let's try it again. Chief Satran, as well as Attorney Kenneth Plum, who helped us with the negotiation available. Very good. Um, so uh, just briefly, and thank you, Mayor, and to the Council. Over the past few months, Chief Satran, Attorney Ken Plum, HR Manager Stephanie Asklin, and I have been meeting with members of the local police union to discuss the collective bargaining agreement. The union negotiating team consisted of or was represented by Sergeant Tony Gonzalez, Officers John Blair and David Gove, as well as um, IBPO uh, Representative Ed Kaczynski. Wow, Kowalski. I forgot his name. Kaczynski. I knew I said it right the first time. Mm -hmm. Apologize to Ed. Uh, a considerable amount of time focused on operational efficiencies and maximizing the talent of this workforce while trying to keep costs in check. As we saw during the budget process this spring, a major driver of the town's budget was actually legacy costs associated with retirees. And as I said during the budget presentation, this is not to suggest that these individuals did not earn their retirement. That's not what this is about. Um, this administration continues to focus on keeping those costs manageable for the future. So as such, we went into contract negotiations to achieve two major outputs. The first is that we're really looking for an opportunity to level out the long-term costs of maintaining an active workforce while reducing the future costs that are burdened on the taxpayers. And the second was we were looking to ensure the Wethersfield Police Department remains competitive in the job market in terms of salaries and benefits without break breaking the bank. My opinion is this collective bargaining agreement achieves both of those outputs. Uh, with any negotiation, there was a lot of give and take, a lot of lively conversations. So I want to take this opportunity to commend the union for working through our differences to find that common ground. Um, trying to coordinate an operation that is 24-7, 365 days a year is not easy. Um, so I also want to take an opportunity to commend uh, Chief Satran for a number of new efficiencies initi uh, and initiatives that were agreed upon as part of this process. Um, and lastly, I'd like to thank 
Stephanie Askelin, who was the lead negotiator for this, who unfortunately could not be here tonight, as well as attorney Ken Plum, who did his best to keep me on track during this entire <laughs> process. Um, so with that, if you have questions or concerns, I'm happy to address them. Okay. Are there any council questions? Councilor Latina. Uh, it may just be administrative. Um, it's a four year agreement, but the dates say 2019 to 2022. That would be an administrative uh, miss. So you've got 19 to 20, 20 three 21, year 21 to 22. No, it's four years. 20, yeah, it should be amended. Motion. Yep. Nice catch, Councilor Latina. Thank you. Yep. Here, you're recommending us amend the motion to June 30th of 2023. That is correct. Okay. I move to amend the motion and strike the words 2022 and replace them with 2023. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, let's vote on the amendment first. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions to the amendment? Okay. So we now have an amended motion. Are there any other questions on the contract? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries, thank you. Catch, Next we have the Town Hall Library Cooling Tower Replacement. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to purchase an Evapco cooling tower in the amount of $85,000 using funding as approved under the Capital Improvement Plan. And do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, town manager, are you speaking to this or shall we have Sally come up? It's always fun, but I'll do uh, if it pleases the mayor and if it's okay. Go right I'll do ahead. You can start so, in. <laughs> um, as mentioned in the uh, agenda form, $85,000 was set aside to replace the cooling tower as the unit has reached its useful life and the louvers on the outside of the building are not preventing water from penetrating and entering the building. So in order to keep cost down if approved um, we're going to look to keep the existing piping and just replace the the mechanism on the inside on the inside of the tower which and sally can correct me was installed in or on or about 1993 um, it's rusted out in a number of places and it's becoming costly to repair um, i walked the unit myself in the area and i was impressed with physical services ability to creatively sustain life um, I felt like I was in a MacGyver episode with caulking, duct tape, rubber tubing, and plastic bins everywhere. But um, I think it, it's, it's time to address this. And um, as a reminder, this equipment, the duct work and piping were not part of the town hall renovation that took place, probably started in 2004. I don't know when it was completed, but yes. uh, so that's all I have. I don't know if Thank you want to Thank you, add. town manager. Uh, Sally Katz, director of physical services. Anybody have any questions for Sally? Sally, is the cooling system and heating system combined? It is. Th this provides chilled water to the chillers, which provide air conditioning to the library and parts of town hall. Okay. Um, and just out of curiosity, this obviously affects the collection, correct? Aside from the people who are working in the two buildings. Yes. It, part of the reason why we want to do this is that if you walk outside of the building and you look up and you see this big square, those are the louvers that provide fresh air into that, into where the unit is currently housed. Those louvers are not large enough. And when there is a substantial wind driven rain, rain comes into where the cooling tower is and unfortunately has uh, ponded and flooded at times into the library. The new louver system will um, have it so that the rain will, um, not be able to come in and therefore it save and yes preserve the collection the uh, the dehumidification of the hvac system also does add to the um, the right amount of humidity for the collections but um, our library director brooke barry is here also who can answer those specific questions to the you know to the collection 
Thank you. Are there any other questions from councilors? Councilor Rell. Thank you, Sally. Uh, this goes to the question or the concern that I have of when the um, replacement cooling tower is installed, mm -hmm. will the contractor who's installing it uh, be in charge of making sure there's no leaks, uh, that uh, the roofing material is sound, mm -hmm. and that if there's any problems? Right. We'll be working it um, actually on a th um, from three different angles. We have Tremco, who is our roofing uh, consultant, who will be a part of the team. We have the people from the company who is doing the installation. We also have our people who are the ones who have been servicing and working with the equipment uh, since it was installed, all there during and throughout the installation process, through the testing, of the all of the equipment and making sure that we get signed off on the warranties and that we get, have a guarantee that what we purchase will work and that will work efficiently and that we have all of the appropriate warranties and um, operations manuals available to us moving forward. Okay. And it's like for like uh, yeah. size wise. Uh, 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 yes. Dimensions. It's. It's slightly smaller. Um, it's made out of stainless steel instead of galvanized at this point. Uh, it is like for like, and as I described in the agenda item, it is highly unusual to have this type of a piece of equipment indoors. Um, if you travel around, they're always outside. We looked for outside alternatives, but unfortunately the way the building is oriented and the rose garden and other, uh, and other things around the library, we really couldn't move it from this spot. And so this particular unit fits in there and allows us to use, which is why we wanted to go sole source, use our current duct work, which is in good shape. So yes, we can put it right in there without having to re-engineer it, um, you know, go through the ceilings, take out piping and interrupt service, which is what we don't want to do. Good. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Sally, is there a warranty on this device? Yes. How long? Um, it's a minimum of five years. We'll look and see. Maximum? Well, we're, we'll, we will also. <laughs> well, no, we will also look and see what other type of potential long-term arrangements. You know, they most um, companies guarantee ins installation for a year, and then there are different parts of the unit that have different warranty um, expirations. But we will have all of that paperwork, all the warranties and everything that we can locked and loaded before we sign off on the project as being complete. And the uh, unit that is in there now, how long has it lasted? Since 1993. So 20-something 20 20 years. Yeah. And what's the expected life of this new unit? Uh, same, about 25 years. Okay. Now, um, since 93, as we've seen in a lot of areas, sometimes we see some efficiency improvements. Mm -hmm. And my guess, but this is just a guess, it's like air conditioning is a large part of many electric bills. Yes. Are we going to see any type of uh, efficiency improvements with this particular newer? And mm -hmm. then what does that sort of percentage right. look like as far as the savings go? I can't tell you the exact percentage because I don't have it. Sure. Will we see efficiencies? Yes, in that the uh, equipment does get better. Are we going to see large efficiencies? No, we're not. It's still has to take in air, which is usually is because it's running in the summer, hot and humid, run it through the systems, chill it down to go to the chillers to create the air conditioning. So the process itself is energy intensive, but it will not exceed what we're currently dealing with, which is now an exceptionally antiquated machine, which has to work that much harder to produce what we need it to produce. This machine, we, we will be able to program so that it can cycle um, more efficiently than the, than the equipment that we are currently operating. Does it also have the ability to, I mean, maybe back at the central station to turn on and off, like you can control it from we currently okay. do that with this, this building in the library. We are already on automated building systems. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. Well, 
Oh, you, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm it's looking okay. at you. I thought you were pointing down there. I'm looking no down there. <laughs> uh, just a comment, Sally. I just want to commend uh, your staff and all on deciding to use the current manufacturer to save on using the existing uh, ductwork and save the engineering yeah. studies that would be required because that would probably be a major addition to the price tag to put this yes. thing in. So I want to commend your staff for doing that. Major, thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no other questions or comments, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we... Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> next we have the 2020 Town Council meeting dates. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the meeting dates of the Wethersfield Town Council for the year of 2020. Second. Okay, I would like to just comment, Dolores, can we make sure that the dates appear in the minutes so we have them? Okay. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Uh, any opposition or abstentions? Okay, motion carries. We have no bids. We have two ordinances for introduction, ordinance to amend um, Part 1, Article 30, the Veterans Commission, and Ordinance to Amend Chapter 50, Alarms, Article 1. So those will um, have hearings in action at our next council meeting. Uh, we move into the minutes. Do I have a motion for the August 19th regular meeting? Move to approve them. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, are there any um, changes to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, we have the meeting minutes of the September 3rd meeting. Do I have a motion for those? Move to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, are there any corrections or changes to these minutes? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Yeah. Thank you. We now move back into public comment. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. Make sure you state your name and address and speak into the microphone. Jerry, oh, Joe. No, go ahead. That's it, you're up, go ahead. <laughs> well, he raised, he raised his hand, so I was calling well, him. Well, ladies and you, gentlemen, you thank first. you for listening. I didn't see, uh, I saw with a, a few people a name, little name of interest. Name Joe Duffy, I'm still Friday. Joe Duffy. Still Joe Duffy, <laughs> still at 27 Lincoln Road, still putting up with the noise that that gentleman's wife is, is sick of, okay? Uh, I just want to suggest, uh, Gary, your presentation of the issues, I know you got a lot of important business here, but your presentation of the issues was so brief and lacking in passion, I thought I was re reading Caesar's commentaries on the Gallic Wars, you know, very brief. <laughs> Number one, uh, I would appreciate, I'm sure these people, what I'm speaking for myself, as I always do, I would appreciate if there's any meeting being held, could you please include the people at Lincoln Road and the people on Garden Street? Okay, I don't know why you would meet with, you know, one sector and not with the other. We haven't had a meeting with you. I take umbrage at that. That's number one. I'm in a meeting at wherever you met. Uh, any questions for me? Uh, number two, uh, since the process is moving along very slowly, I'm getting that sinking feeling, you know, that we're going to be going into the, 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 the winter season and it's not going to be solved. So, uh, hoping to be proved wrong, because I, for one, I don't know how you people feel about it. I don't want the media in Wethersfield. They don't like the police, you know, the media. They don't like other things. Do you want those people to come back here? I don't want to hurt the town. And I'll tell you that a lot of angry people in town, in a section of town, it's not a good thing. Therefore, I'm going to suggest that, uh, Gary, uh, we're not going to go near the property. We're peaceable people. I'm going to suggest that they take some immediate palliative measures to cut down that noise. Then this process will have some credibility. Those are my suggestions, and I'll see you in the winter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Duffy. Jerry? Jerry Jingris, 21 Dorchester. Um, I, I, I applaud the, the notion of trying to get this right and uh, with the, the owners of the doggy daycare hiring an acoustical engineer and, and, and just trying to, to figure out a proper solution. And, and, I, 
And I appreciate the fact that that kind of thing takes time because you know I've, I've been in that sort of business in the past and, and I know to do things right, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of hurdles you have to jump. My, my uh, focus is, is on a, diff a totally different issue than that. Um, and that, that, that whole engineering thing and, 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 and structuring it could take you know, a, a quite a while longer. My focus is on until that happens, until there's a, a, a plausible solution where the dogs can be kept outside in, in, a, in some sort of a container or what have you that, that reduces the noise or, or indoor, whatever. Until then, we have a regulation on our books and for some reason, when I talked to the, uh, um, to, to the animal control officer, uh, she kind of alluded that, you know, she, she, it's not within her, um, her, her uh, uh, I guess, authority to enforce our own regulations. And, and I, and I, I kind of took me off guard, and I, I kind of went back to her and said, I, I think it says in the regs here that it is your authority to enforce our regulations. So apparently s someone on top is going down you know, and, and, and sort of declaring that, and I think you're wrong. So I th I'm, I'm planning on working hard w with you know, all the folks in town to try to get through that part of it. But I would ask that you separate the actions of trying to get the doggy daycare in a proper situation versus the action of enforcing our rules and regulations that we have in the books today. And my focus is on that latter part. And I would, I would ask you to kind of separate that as well. And I plan on, on, on pursuing this again with the, with the dog warden and the, and the police department and, 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 and with the town manager Evans and whoever, whoever it takes. I don't know who all the players are that I need, that I need to work with and go to, but I do plan on, on pursuing that. And I would ask that we separate those two things. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak tonight? Come on up, Mr. Williams. Norm, Karen Williams, 149 Garden Street. I think normally I would apologize for not following Robert's rules, of which I'm very familiar with. However, I'm so peeved, as are my uh, fellow neighbors, that we, we must address this, and it must be addressed not in November at the first P&Z meeting, possibly, because that'll just be the first meeting. Uh, following Jerry, uh, Town Regs 70-5, as part of any order issued in writing and by certified mail pursuant to this chapter, the animal control officer shall have the authority to order the following administrative sanctions and remedies if there is no compliance after seven days from the date of issue. Um, I'm not quite sure how to um, address this because I want to do it in a, in, a, in a way that everybody wins. I'm not trying to be confrontational. We're not trying to be confrontational. Trust me when I say this, and I can't say it with any more simplicity. If you had to live for seven months of listening to this continuous noise, day in, day out, all day, you would be more empathetic to what our situation is. The plight of our lifestyle is just horrendous. It's ridiculous. Planning and zoning is culpable to a degree. Maybe our laws or regulations are culpable to a degree. But I can't help believe, you know, I got a solution for this guy. Four walls and a roof, half the size of his place. He doesn't need that run. They're never down below. And I've been there looking and watching and photographing. That's how I met the police. <laughs> they called the police on me. Um, four walls and a roof. That'll do it. Here's another solution. Put a mat. You know, I've, I've talked to the state guy about this. He says, well, it sounds like it's bouncing off the back. Gary, you've said that. Others, or Mr. Town Manager, others have said that. It makes sense. Have like a full sound absorption mat, mat, like a wrestling mat shape, if you will, but it absorbs sound. 
And then, because it slopes for your direction from down, have a 14-foot wall at the top and a 16-foot wall at the bottom to accommodate the slope. That's another thought. You still haven't gotten, if I understood you, you still haven't got his quote, which, right, frankly, I don't give a crap what his quote, what it costs him. I know what it's costing us in terms of our lives. Planning and zoning, the town, whomever, whatever, this is wrong. It should not have happened. And Gary, if I understood you correctly a few moments ago, uh, you said that they couldn't produce the items that were required to get the application. They didn't follow due diligence. The town did not follow protocol. We're the morons who have to live up with that. We didn't do it. Planning and zoning. Mr. Morrison told my wife, well, he doesn't go to every P&Z meeting, quote, end quote. We can't get on an agenda. How can that be right? How can public people of a town not get on an agenda whereby there is an issue, a very volatile, very real issue, that we can't address for the people who help create this issue? That being said, since protocol wasn't followed correctly, properly, I'm going to go back to the letter I sent a while ago. We need an immediate cease and desist. They should not be allowed to operate as they have since they didn't do it fairly, correctly, properly, legally. You shouldn't be having to bend over and accommodate and go along and give them every right to do whatever the hell they're doing. You see, I've communicated with the chief. So what do we do? How do we, if I was asking questions, I would be wondering, well, how the hell do I get to the, how do we get to the planning and zoning meeting? Or since the right rules haven't been followed, how is it that we can't make them stop immediately and then they go through the correct process and we all get to communicate. Because if I understand the process, there has to be a hearing, they have to refile, they have to do a new plot plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Which should have all, okay, which should have all been done beforehand. So how do we follow this up? We have to come to you. You're the guys who are supposed to be protecting and overseeing what we're, what we're uh, to avoid situations like this. Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. Just for a little information for some of the people that are speaking, I have attended planning and zoning meetings for the last three years. I don't think I've missed one. At the end of their meeting, there is a portion where they allow the public to speak on general matters. It doesn't have to be an item that's on the agenda. For an item to be on the agenda, someone has to be applying for something. So uh, you can go to the meeting. I would uh, mention it to the uh, chairperson at the beginning of the meeting. I'm a regular there, so they don't really usually ask me if I have anything to say. So, uh, But I, they are uh, very accommodating. They don't have a timer, so you're allowed to speak as long as you want. And they do converse back and forth with you. You may not get the answers you want to hear, but they will at least entertain you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Mr. Young? Good evening again. Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. As I was talking earlier about attending the FOI meeting in Hartford, uh, I also had presented to them several cases, decisions, where very similar to ours, 
where the town did not want to pony up the appraisal of a property that they were buying. And I came across a, a case, it was called Penny A. Bray. And this was, uh, the docket number was 87-281, dated November 3rd, 1987. This, this particular case, without going through every line item, it says that it found that the question of whether the acquired property uh, for, that was being priced at $8.75 million must be decided in a public referendum, which has not occurred yet. That same like in our particular case. Uh, it went on to other issues, and then it said that the complainant, that's the person from the public who was complaining, was dismissed. Then it went on and said, while the Freedom of Information Commission finds a legal basis for the respondent's claim of exemption from the general rule of disclosure, the complainant herein is right in pressing for full disclosure of all details of the appraisal report because disclosure under the circumstances of this case is supported by the intent of the legislature when it adopted the Freedom of Information Act. The failure of the respondents, that was the town, to provide public access to the appraisal makes the decision in the upcoming referendum less likely to be well-informed decision. And that affected all the people in Weathersfield. Every voter that went in to vote didn't know what they were voting for as far as value goes. They didn't know where the value even was for that property. But you folks had bought and paid with taxpayer money an appraisal that you refused to put out to the public to review. And every member of this town should have had access to it. So it goes on. Thus, the commission urges, I like that word, urges, the respondents, that was the town, to make the appraisal available so that the members of the public can make an informed choice when they vote on the referendum concerning land acquisition. So the guy gets thrown out of FOI. He's told he doesn't have any right under the law. But FOI says, but you, you should have had it. And this was back in 1987. And nothing has happened to that law ever since. So I complained. And you know, I told him, I said, you know, public hearings promote transparency. And they provide the citizens with the insight and information that citizens might otherwise not be aware of. And of course, in this particular case, nobody knew what the value of that property was. All they knew is you said that you negotiated, and even Mr. Forrest sitting over here says it's probably fair market value. I continue to doubt that. I continue to doubt that very much, and this issue is going to continue. And the state of Connecticut, as bad as they are, they decided that the citizens who eventually are responsible to pay for for this property, they're not capable. They're not capable enough to make real estate purchase decisions. They're not knowledgeable enough. The state of Connecticut is just as bad as you are. Because they said that, you said the same thing, that we're not capable. And I brought you over the course of a number of months, how many properties? that were in the 15, 20, 25,000, $30,000 range in our area here, and you spent and you committed $75,000 an acre. You also overpaid, and you're up for re-election now. And I hope the citizens throw you out and don't vote for you. They're not going to lose you, just don't vote for you. Now, there was another article. 
Mr. Young, Rocky, wrap it up, please. Yeah, I'm going to wrap it up. In Rocky Hill, they're purchasing a property called the Straska Farm. It's heading to referendum. A couple of weeks ago, I contacted the, the town manager and I says, hey, can I see a copy of the appraisal? He says, well, you know, it's a hundred and some pages long. Come on down, he says. And I says, can I bring my scan hand scanner? Absolutely. Big difference between Weathersfield and Rocky Hill. Next door neighbors. One guy says, yeah, come on down. The other ones, nope, we're not sharing anything with you people. So, madam, there's a lot more going on here, and it's going to continue. And you can assure that I'll be back. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Come on up, Mr. Rue. <clears throat> George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. And you can all hear me. Yes. One of my first comments is going to be a perennial complaint against all of you, with few exceptions. You and Mr. Rell are always easy to hear. Too much mumbling. It's like you don't want us to hear. I, I find this a little bit annoying, personally. It's not, is it a major problem? I tell you, what's happening in Wethersfield is not the top of my priority list as far as our government is concerned. I can live with what's happening here. <laughs> so my interests are elsewhere. But there are some things I'm still very interested in. Speak up. Don't mumble. Because these people want to know. This gentleman over here, he was not hard, he was not hard to understand it here. Mr. I forget, I had never met him before, but in any event, he spoke clearly. So the, that's just a starting point. Uh, on, on a positive side, uh, I had the opportunity, and I've spoken to uh, about our, my pond, your pond. And uh, I've, I've spoken to Sally, and she's been, the town has been very good in maintaining the property and, uh, and, taking, and doing what has to be done. The town has spent a lot of money on that property, but it's starting to head downhill again. And uh, uh, the reason I'm bringing it up to council, I was planning to get together with Gary, but I made deference to his, his the greater pressures he was under than I was under. <laughs> so I, I think I shared most of, I think pretty effectively with Cheryl. I hope she shared it with you. Uh, but I think the, what, what worried me was Sally's comment, she didn't have the money. Well, find it. We're not talking about thousands of dollars. We've got a nice weir there. It can be, the pond can be drained. All of the growth can be pulled out. What's involved is not, is not rocket science. It's not going to cost millions of dollars. But if it doesn't get done, all of the money that was spent a couple of years back will have gone down the drain. So that, that said, that's done. That's more council vis-a-vis -vis complaint. Let it look, let's look at it that way, OK? Uh, the uh, The... Uh, Ken Lesser's comments about the Veterans Commission, it, it kind of struck a familiar tone to me, or a, 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 a sensitive tone to me. And, uh, and I think what, what I sensed and could hear is helping is fine, and I think that some veterans are really going to need help. A lot of them do. Okay? Maybe some of them are not as fortunate as me. I don't come, come down here crying about the blues, about, you know, do this for me, do that for me, except take care of my pond. That's about the only thing. <laughs> So, uh, but I think you want, don't want to lose sight of, and again, these are, these are some thoughts I'm sharing with you vis-a-vis -vis complaints. Don't lose sight of what these guys, and me to a degree, fought and died for in World War II and all of the wars since. Freedom of speech was high on the priority. And I think, I believe, and I sense this, that many members of the community, they just don't, you know, when you say keep quiet, your five minutes are up, I think it rubs people the wrong way. And I've been coming to these council meetings longer than at least some of you have been alive. And I can remember the times where we could speak, not forever, but, you know, with, until we had, until the, the thoughts that people wanted to convey were complete. And I think there's a certain level of flexibility that ought to be built into your time. I've been paying 
attention. Now, these meetings were about an hour and a half, and I can remember times when the council meetings regularly ran until 10, 10.30 at night, because there was a lot to do. And I tried to get to the last council meeting, but my kids showed up with pizza and I couldn't get at it, and I said, I'm going to go listen to the end of it. The meeting was over, it was about 45 minutes. And yet, when we want to speak, or when people of the community want to speak, it's like five minutes are going to make a big difference in the, in the life of any of you. And I think you want to rethink the, the hard-nosed, nah, maybe let me put it a little softer, the rigid, the rigid approach that you use in announcing that you got five minutes. Some of these people, like this gentleman, he's not bashful, and the others weren't bashful, but you could see people who wanted to come up and wanted to say something. And I think courtesy and thoughtfulness should be a part and parcel of letting people finish what they say. Now, if George Rue goes for half an hour, hey, George, sit down, I'll sit down. I try to get it done most of the time in short order. And, and even Mr. Young, he, he gets, sometimes he gets carried away, and sometimes they agree, sometimes they don't agree. But I think he has a pretty good handle on where it ought to be, or where, where the five minutes are. And, you know, it's gentle, hey, knock it off, you know. But in any event, that, that's been a sort of a, a, a a, uh, a couple of thoughts I just wanted to share with you. And call them what you will, call them, I call them maybe just sharing thoughts. And this is really why I wanted to get together with Gary. I wanted to get to know him a little better and just chat with him. And chatting now is kind of hard. It's kind of, it's difficult sometimes to be candid. And sometimes when I've met with uh, 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 Amy alone several times, well, when she had, when she had private, you know, the, the open meetings on Saturday mornings, and we've talked over coffee, and there's a lot of things that can be said more bluntly, more directly, and maybe more effectively. And I understand that from this podium, there's a certain level of decorum that is appropriate. But by the same token, all of you have to say, when you're speaking, some of you are worse than others. They're the people you should be speaking to. Not off to the side like this, and you know who you are. I don't have to point you out. So, so try to work at it, huh? Thanks a lot. Thank see you. you. I'll see you from time to time before I, before I move. Where, where are you going? I got property down all over this Oh, brother. <laughs> we don't want you moving there anytime soon, George. Um, Anybody uh, else who'd like? They keep you awake, George. Be what? careful. The dogs may keep you awake. Be careful where you plan to move. Uh, is there is there is there anybody who has not spoken the second time around who'd like to speak? Okay. Seeing none, we're going to go move into executive session. So I need a motion, please. Motion to move into executive session. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Okay, aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. So we will move into executive session. Thank you.